We're starting off chapter 8 with a little bit of a review talking about Pythagorean theorem and its converse. You should have learned about this already, but we're going to be talking about a few different things, looking at how to find the length of the hypotenuse, but also being able to find the length of a leg, and then also using Pythagorean theorem to solve word problems. We then will look at the converse of Pythagorean theorem to identify whether something is a right triangle and then to classify it, if it's not a right triangle, as either acute or obtuse. So let's begin with a little bit of vocab. First of all, we have this thing called the hypotenuse, which is the side of the right triangle opposite of the right angle. So if I draw a right triangle in here for you, and it's not going to be perfect, let's say that's your triangle, and we've got our 90 degree box there, then this side here is the hypotenuse because it's opposite of that right angle. These other two sides are called legs. So the sides of the right triangle which form the right angle. You can see they form that right angle box. The side opposite is the hypotenuse. Now we have these things called Pythagorean triples and they're sets of non-zero whole numbers A, B, and C that satisfy satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. Now it's just interesting because it happens to be three whole numbers that work out. So if I were to use Pythagorean theorem with three, four, and five, it'll work out. Three squared is nine, four squared is 16. If I add those together, I get 25, which is five squared. Same with 12, or five, 12, and 13, eight, 15, 17. Those are three examples of Pythagorean triples. Now what we can also do is we can just take those numbers and multiply them by any other constant. So here I go from 3, 4, 5 to 6, 8, 10. All I've done is I've multiplied by 2, but it still keeps the same ratio. So if my sides are in the ratio 3, 4, 5, then I do have a Pythagorean triple. If my sides are in the ratio 15, 12, 13, then I do still have a Pythagorean triple. So in this case, 15, 36, 39, what I've done is I multiplied by 3. And then I also took 8, 15, 17, and I multiplied each of those by 4. So multiplying by 2, multiplying by 3, multiplying by 4, I still have Pythagorean triples. So this is the Pythagorean theorem, in case you do not remember this from your past years of math classes, but a squared plus b squared plus c squared, where a and b are your legs and c is your hypotenuse. So here's a picture, A and B are your legs, you square them, add them together, and that should equal C squared, your hypotenuse squared. If it is a right triangle, then I know this will hold. So let's look at an example. Okay, what is the length of the hypotenuse in triangle ABC? So they give me my two legs. I'm looking for my hypotenuse. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, 20 squared plus 21 squared equals C squared because I don't know my C value, which is my hypotenuse. So then we take out our calculator and 20 squared gives me, oops, 20 squared gives me 400, 21 squared gives me 441 that's still going to be equal to whatever my hypotenuse squared is going to end up being. So if I add 400 to 441, I get 841 is going to be equal to my c squared. But I'm not concerned with my c squared value, so what I need to do in order to solve is take the square root of both sides. So the square root of 841, 29. The square root of 841 is 29. So I know that my hypotenuse is 29. So then you go ahead, you do that, you try. Now here we're doing something very similar, except instead of finding the hypotenuse, I have to go and find one of the legs. So they've given me my hypotenuse, now I'm missing a leg. Okay, so I'm still gonna use Pythagorean theorem. I set it up in a very similar manner. I start with my formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared but I don't know one of my legs, so I'm gonna leave a squared as what I need to solve. b squared, I'm gonna plug in eight, because that's my leg, and my hypotenuse is 20. 
So when I calculate those values, I get a squared plus 64 equals 400. Now my goal is to solve for a, that's my leg, right? So I need to solve for a, which means I need to get it by itself by moving the 64 to the other side. I get a squared equals 336. When I take the square root, square root of 336, I put that in my calculator, I get 18.33. But if I look at the problem, it says express your answer in simplest radical form, which means they do not want me to give them a decimal. They want me to reduce or simplify that 336. Okay, so what I need to do is this thing called Joe's method. I've talked to you guys about this before. I've got 336. I draw a line down next to it. I'm going to start dividing. Whew, this might take a while. Okay, 336 divided by 2. I get 168. Divided by 2. I get 84. Divided by 2. I get 42. Divided by 2. 21. Divided by 2. Oh, that won't work. Okay, divide by 3. I get 7. 7 divisible by 3, no. Divisible by 5, no. Divisible by 7 gets me my 1. Okay, so because this is a square root, I'm looking for groups of 2. So do I have any groups of 2 that get to come out? Yeah, I have that group there. I have that group there. So they get to come out, which means I get A equal to 2 times 2, 4. A total of 4 came out. And then left inside was this poor little 3 and this poor little 7. So I multiply them together and I get 21. So my answer is that that leg measures 4 radical 21. And then I have two U-try problems for you to do there. One of them is this word problem talking about a, a computer monitor. That's a really good problem. You might want to draw a picture, though, to help you with that one. So now we have to talk about the converse of Pythagorean theorem. All that's saying is if you have this formula holding true, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then you know it has to be a right triangle. So this first question says a triangle has lengths 85, 84, and 13. Is the triangle a right triangle? And explain. Well, my explanation is just going to be actually going through and calculating using Pythagorean theorem. So a triangle has side lengths 85, 84, and 13. Um, how do I know which one is my hypotenuse? So what's true about the hypotenuse is that it always has to be the longest side of your triangle. So this is my longest side of my triangle, which means I'm going to take 13 squared and 84 squared and set that equal to 85 squared. My longest side is my hypotenuse. So because this is my longest side, that's going to be my hypotenuse. Now in my calculator, 13 squared is 169. 84 squared is, whoa, 7,056. And 85 squared is 7,225. So now I want to know, I'm going to put question marks above these equal signs because I'm not sure if that's actually true. That's what I'm trying to figure out. So if I add up 7,056 plus that 169, I do in fact get 7,225. So that's true, which means, yes, this is a right triangle if those things do end up being equal, it is in fact a right triangle. So you go ahead and try that next, you try. Now we have to talk about the case where those things don't actually work out to be true. Because yes, I can say, well, no, it's not a right triangle, but we want to be more specific than that. So if it's not a right triangle, then what is it? Is it acute or is it obtuse? Now, first thing, there is a typo on this page, so I'd like you to correct one thing when you're writing this. Theorem 8.3, I had the wrong word there. I need to write the word obtuse. 
So theorem 8.4 tells us about um, acute triangles, and theorem 8.3 tells us about obtuse triangles. I don't technically have those in the right order. It doesn't go with 8.3, then 8.4, but it doesn't matter because they're kind of like sister theorems. Okay, one is telling us that if our longest side or our hypotenuse, um, what we're anticipating to be our hypotenuse, is less than our two shorter sides, then I know it's acute. If our longest side is greater than our two shorter sides added together, then I know it's obtuse. So please make sure you have those two things in your notes, and we're going to look at an example. A triangle has side lengths 6, 11, and 14. Is the triangle acute, obtuse, or right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two shorter sides, my 6 and my 11, and I'm going to square each of them and add them together. Then I'm also going to take my 14, and I'm going to square that. But I don't know what the relationship is between those numbers, so that's what I need to figure out using my calculator. I know in my head 6 squared is 36, and I know 11 squared is 121. 14 squared might be a little bit harder for some of you to have memorized, but I know that 14 squared is 196. So let's do this. Let's add our 121 and our 36. We get 157. How does 157 compare to 196? Well, our 196 is bigger. So because that's bigger than our two shorter sides added together, I know that this triangle is an obtuse triangle. If our longest side is bigger, that means it opens really big. Actually, let me make that even more obvious. If our longest side is bigger than the sum of those two other sides, then we know our triangle opens really big because this piece has to be really long. So it's an obtuse triangle. And then I've got two U-try problems there for you. Please make sure you have all these U-try problems in your notes, but also the examples that I am doing. You also need to have those down. Just like when we take notes in class and you're writing down the examples that I'm doing, you also need to make sure you have them in your notes. So please make sure you have those and I will see you in class.